All right, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, in this video today, I'm going to be showing you guys how, uh, or, or what I think is an easy way to keep pages consistent from one to the next without having to reinvent the wheel with every page. And, and I've done some videos on this in the past. This is a little bit of a different method uh, than, I've, uh, than I used, I think, in the last video. Uh, and so uh, what you guys are seeing here is uh, this is a page from Slight, which is uh, a project I'm working on right now with Rob Guillory, who you probably know from Chew uh, at Image. And uh, so it's been really cool to get to work with him. And, uh, and so anyway, it's a movie tie-in for this uh, movie called Slight. It's coming out uh, in April. And so I have no idea when you guys will actually <laughs> get to see this. Uh, today is January 24th, 2017 when I'm working on it, so who knows when I'll get to actually uh, put this online. But um, So what I've done here, I've, uh, this page is finished. I'm, I'm going to use this uh, as the template to copy over all of my rendering uh, colors and things like that onto my next page. Now, you guys that have watched my channel for a while, uh, you, <laughs> there's a lot of layers that you are probably not used to seeing from me. I usually, I tend to work with, with just a few layers, but um, with with this, it was a, uh, uh, it's a new publisher. It's a new artist that I've never worked with before. Uh, and so there was, uh, there's a lot of unknowns and there's a lot of uh, chances for, uh, you know, obviously they want things they want things changed or they want colors adjusted or things like that And so I wanted to make it as easy as possible for myself to be able to go in and make those changes very quickly uh, And this page was actually a great example of how that kind of worked out because uh, there was uh, another version of this page had a completely different color scheme and uh, so anyway on the on the left, okay, so this is page seven. I'm gonna go ahead and drag over page eight. Now, the only thing I have done uh, so far on this page is uh, I set up a few of the um, the base colors, you know, basically the main character's colors, because for uh, for most of this, it's gonna be pretty heavily affected by other. Um, uh, you know other layers and other things. So I'm not that worried about background characters and things like that at this point. I will probably end up uh, changing those uh, pretty dramatically. But um, all right, so I've got that page open here, and I'll have this one open over here. Now I'm going to kind of explain what I've done on this first page first. Actually, let me do that before we get into the details here. So. Um, We'll use this panel as an example. Now, all these layers, they're really just different uh, layers that are affecting the image. So if I turn off this entire group, you can see the just the base flat colors underneath. Now, in this group, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on in the group. So I'm going to turn all this off and then turn them on individually. So um, there is a slight orange kind of tinge over all of the... Um, characters that aren't main characters here basically to sort of again kind of push those into the background a little bit uh, there is a uh, green uh, layer in uh, color mode at about 60 percent this is uh, impacting uh, these two are basically doing the same thing um, and kind of washing all of those in that particular color in that kind of bluish turquoise color uh, there are some texture layers in here can barely see this probably but there's some it's a good bit of texture in the in the sky and things like that um, and there is really only one main rendering color here okay so because uh, when when Rob first approached me for this uh, he had told me he wanted a simpler style than what he was doing on uh, Chew uh, which is not overly complicated but it, there are there's a lot of detail in the color and and the rendering's um, pretty detailed. There's a, there's a lot going on there. So uh, with this, he wanted something a little bit simpler. And so it really is uh, almost a cell shaded. I mean, they're not completely flat highlight colors. There's a little bit of a gradient in most of these, but um, that's really the only rendering color on the entire page in this case. Now this doesn't work in every scenario, but when you're going with a very kind of graphic um, page like this where, um, 
uh, things aren't realistic colors, then you know that that works in some cases, and it makes rendering really fast because you don't have to go in choosing colors all the time. And if you're not familiar with painting on mask layers or uh, uh, solid colored layers, is what I'm using here. There, I'll link a video in the description on painting on mask because that's what I'm doing on all of this. Uh, let's see, that just is uh, affecting his. In the bottom panel, we got this guy over here. A couple of little random other layers on top where I was just cleaning things up, basically. Uh, and then there's a little subtle texture over all of it. Okay, so that's all of the layers that are making up the colors on this page. Now, instead of recreating all of that, I'm just going to copy them over. So I'm going to drag this. Sometimes Photoshop doesn't want to do this the first time. There we go. All right, so. I've got it both open now side by side. So I'm basically going to go down the line here, just copying over all of those uh, individual layers. Now I'm not going to use all of those. I, I actually don't, I don't want to bring all of this over. So I'm just going to kind of bring the ones that are most important. The, um, this green layer that I know I'm going to use, I'm going to drag it over. And you can see that it actually still has the, the rendering from the other page in there and somebody in the comments can tell me the fastest way to prevent that from happening <laughs> but uh, I just paint it all back in or paint it all out um, and uh, either way works for me so um, so we've got that and then what else do I want to bring over uh, I want to bring over I'll copy the texture separately but that rendering color I want to use that same rendering color again so I'm going to drag it over and again I'll just uh, uh, let's see, let me see, let me just go in here, I'm going to paint all this in. I'm actually going to fill this with black and get rid of all of it. And Photoshop is acting up again. Yeah, I don't know, sometimes going from straight black to white, it, uh, it doesn't work. I guess I could delete the mask. Well, does that work? Is that the easiest thing to do? I might... Let me see. All right, that's what I brought over. If I delete the mask, and then I could add a mask back. That's faster. See, I'm learning something while I'm working with you guys. So um, I should have thought of that already. <laughs> All right, so uh, I've got, and right now that, that color is washing the entire scene. So I'm definitely going to go back, and I'm going to pull that out of some of those areas, but we'll get to that in just a second. So yeah, it's really just those two layers are what I'm, I'm going to start with. So I'm going to go ahead and pull both of those over to my other page. And i uh, just do that. All right. So now I'm going to have, I'm going to have to go back and adjust some colors underneath, but I'm, I'm getting into the ballpark of where I want to be with uh, the overall palette on these pages without really having to go back and do a whole bunch of uh, color picking again. Now, um, so the, uh, and, and this kind of ties into using those mask layers and understanding how to do that. So I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail on all that. Like I said, watch that video I made on, um, it's called a very different coloring method, I think, which is, uh, it's different from my usual method at the time that I did it. So uh, there are some other colors that use it. But, um, but let's say that I, in this case, just like on page seven, I don't want that blue tinge in the sky. I just don't want it there at all. I don't want it impacting the sky so I can get some really good contrast between the foreground and the sky in the background. So all I've got to do is select the sky and you can see it's actually selected some of this other, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Actually, that's going to get deleted anyway. So yeah, we've got all the background selected, actually. And I think that about does that. So then all I've got to do is go back to my layer where that is affecting the page. And I can just fill that with black to get rid of it. Okay. So, uh, and already, this is kind of interesting, the way that color works relative to itself. I'm always kind of amazed by this. Um, there are colors that don't seem to work as well when uh, some of these uh, background colors seem on some of these characters 
seem kind of weird and, and they're not colors that you would choose but when you surround it with a completely different set of colors it sort of uh, it sort of ties it all together in a, in a weird way, and um, you know, and on your color wheel, that blue and yellow are are uh, pretty much opposite each other. So, um, um, so so yeah, it's my color wheel. Something weird about my color wheel. It's not exact opposite, is it? Eh, I'll figure that out later. Probably did something wrong. <laughs> That's pretty close though. All right, so um, so yeah, so just that quickly, I can go back into my other page and do the same thing. I can go in and select all these background areas and give it that. And I just want to. I'm getting rid of everything except. I'm selecting the background here, basically. And again, go back to my mask on the blue and fill it in. All right. And there we go. I didn't actually have the color selected. I didn't change the background color on the sky, which is why that didn't work. There we go. So now the background, the underlying color is actually yellow now. It wasn't before. So um, so yeah, just that quickly, I've got a pretty good baseline to start with to start adjusting colors. And I, I've still got to go in and, uh, you know, there are storytelling elements that have to be set up. And I've got to make sure that, you know, for example, these characters here on the side are, are you know, are a little darker so that you look past them and so that you see what's happening in you know the middle of the panel here things like that of course still need to be adjusted but as far as setting up a palette very quickly and setting up a page very quickly uh, that is one way to do it so uh, i'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up i know this has been uh, kind of a short one but uh, i will record the rest of the uh, making of these pages and hopefully one day i will get to show them to you so uh, who knows? We'll see. Uh, all right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about this stuff, be sure to check the description in the bottom uh, for my coloring course and uh, a bunch of other resources and down there. So check that out. And as always, subscribe if you liked it. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.